Hey guys, James here. Today I'm gonna to go over a new program from MacFun called Noiseless Pro. And uh, this is a really, really intriguing program. So when they asked if I would review it for a digital photography school, I jumped at it. Um, noise is something I've been a really big stickler about for years now. And I've, uh, I've done so many different methods of, of you know, re uh, preventing it in camera and then reducing it uh, in a good, clean way in post-processing. So it's something that I'm very familiar with. And I've used a lot of different programs, uh, but the one that I've settled on before Noiseless Pro has been Topaz Denoise. So I'm gonna use that uh, as kind of like a, com a competitor in a couple of images here. So let's just jump right in. This is a uh, supercell that I photographed in Oklahoma last year. Um, and this thing was racing towards us uh, probably like 30 to 40 miles an hour. It was going pretty quick. Um, and we had to take some, you know, as many shots as we could before we had to blast off to the east um, to try to outrun this thing. But uh, I think this was like a six or seven image vertical um, panorama. And these storms have a huge amount of dynamic range to them. And when you have an image like that with a really large dynamic range, you're going to have to push those pixels pretty far to get all the shadow detail and all the highlight detail um, that you want to pull out of the image. So the side effect of doing that with any image is that you're going to get a decent amount of noise. So we'll go over here to the base of the storm and look underneath it. And uh, you can see all of the really, really good details from these really, you know, straggly, scrappy looking clouds underneath it. Um, and I really want to maintain as much of that detail as possible. So that's going to be kind of the key driver here to see how these programs um, perform. So I will hop into uh, MacFun really quickly just to show you the user interface of this program. So just notice you know, how fast it starts, first of all. Again, this is a huge image. Uh, I didn't do a low res image for this video. This is full resolution, uh, massive uh, panoramic image. And we're gonna open up the program uh, and I'm on a iMac uh, 5K with an i7 processor, 32 gigs of RAM all that good stuff. So when you open the program up, it's gonna automatically be zoomed into 200%. And obviously at that uh, percent here, you're not gonna really be able to see what you're looking at in most parts of the frame. So if you want to get a navigator view, you can click this button here and then it'll pop up down here. So we'll just go down to the same part of the image and I'm gonna put the line uh, right there in the middle of this little point right here in the clouds so we can see the before and after. Um, as far as using the program goes, it really could not be simpler. It opens up, zooms in to 200%, and then you have all of these presets over here on the right-hand side. So the way that I use you know, most of these programs is I want to use the least amount of noise reduction while still removing as much noise as possible. So it's kind of this you know, fine line between going overboard and not doing enough. So, you know, the, the lightest one is chosen right now, and then we can kind of just work our way up. I'll just work my way um, down instead. So we'll go to extreme and show you what you're dealing with when you do noise reduction. So noise reduction is kind of a give and take. Uh, it, it's good because it reduces noise. It's bad because it reduces detail. So you have to find that happy medium in your image. And obviously with extreme here, we've lost so much detail in the image that it's almost not even worth, um, you know, doing because especially look down here in the foreground, there's no detail in the trees or grass or anything like that. So what you want to do is just work your way up and find something that you can use that's still maintaining some detail. So you see with strong here that we still have some detail in the clouds here, but not nearly as much as over here. So we'll jump up another two to medium, see what that does. Okay, I don't even think medium here is necessarily any better than strong. So I'm um, not sure what, what that's doing there. But if we go to moderate, you'll see that we get a nice little bit of detail back in the clouds here. Um, again, if we go to lightest, you're gonna see a lot of noise still up in the clouds up here and down here. Uh, one thing that I noticed, and I think, you know, you have to take these programs 
um, with a little bit of a grain of salt when they first come out because this this is like version 1.0 and they're only going to improve from here so they have to come to market with a with a product that works well but as you go up uh, it's just going to you know hopefully get better and better uh, with the versions so here's what i noticed with this light version right here you're i start to get all these really weird artifacts in the clouds and again as soon as i move it it has to reload that but look right here all these little like, weird swirly artifacts and i don't know why that's just happening um, on this light version but uh since when i went through this image the first time i ended up on this moderate one uh it still has very few, uh, you know a very small amount of artifacts in the clouds and i'm not super happy with that but it's done a nice job of reducing noise while maintaining a good bit of detail here. Now, if you're not happy with the 100% version, you can go over here to the slider and just move it down a little bit and bring in some uh, more detail. So, you know, like if you wanted to do something like this, you still have a little bit of noise, but not nearly as much as over here. And you still have a lot of good detail over here. So that's just something to keep in mind too. Uh, and then if you wanna further adjust it, you can go over to the adjust module and start playing with the color and luminous noise and smoothing and structure and all of that good stuff. Uh, that's not really needed for this image right here, but it's there if you need it. So uh, from here, let's just go ahead and exit the program. I'm gonna go back to our original image in Photoshop here, zoomed into the same amount. Oops. And then uh, if you look over here on the right-hand side, I have three different versions. So I wanted to show this Mac Fun um, light version so you can see that, in fact, uh, when you process the image with that second uh, preset, you do, in fact, get these weird artifacts in the clouds in the final image. So I don't know if it's just something weird with that particular algorithm, but it's worth noting. Um, so I'm just kind of hoping that the Mac Fun people see this and they will address that in the next um, update to the, to the software program. And again, I don't know if it's just my image or if it happens with a bunch of them, I'm not sure. Okay, so we'll get rid of that. Now let's turn on the Topaz denoise version. So you can see that Topaz did a really good job of getting rid of all noise, but we did take a decent hit on detail underneath the clouds here. So I'll turn this on and off and you can see what's happening here. And this is just the reality of reducing noise in your images. So now let's turn on the Mac Fun, the moderate preset. Okay, so look how much more detail we have. Now with the Mac Fun moderate turned on, I'm gonna turn on this Topaz Denoise version so we can toggle between those. So this is uh, Topaz Denoise, this is Mac Fun uh, moderate. Okay, so you can see that Mac Fun still got rid of the noise in the clouds but it also retained a lot more detail uh, in the base of the storm here. So that's what I'm excited about because their program seems to be retaining detail better. Okay, so that's the takeaway from that. So with this image done, let's hop over to another type of image that um, I frequent, which is astrophotography. So here we are in our next uh, test. This is a image from the Kilauea uh, Jagger Observatory in uh, Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. And um, this was just an incredible scene. Obviously, we, we have the night sky and the stars behind the glowing um, crater there with the lava glowing and, and uh, smoke coming up and everything was just so awesome. There's even a little bit of uh, moonlight coming up from the top of the image here. So this was taken with a Sony A7S. Um, I believe I was, let me see here, go down to the camera data. This was at ISO 1000, um, so not super high, uh, eight second exposure. And there is a decent amount of noise in it because I pushed this image pretty far in post to pull out all the details that I could uh, out of the image. So you'll see here, <clears throat> but it's not a ton of noise. Uh, it's a decent amount, but not a ton. I've, I certainly have images with far more when I'm shooting the Milky Way and stuff like that. But uh, the main thing here is that we have stars in the image, okay? And that's that's what we wanna focus on here. So you can see here that I have a, a version of Topaz already loaded up, so Topaz Denoise. And then this one is gonna be our um, Mac Fun. Okay, so with that one loaded up, I'll go to Filter, and then Mac Fun, and then Noiseless Pro. 
and we'll load that in. So this is a bit of a smaller image than that panorama, so it should uh, work quite a bit faster, and it has. So let's go over to presets and figure out which one we can use. So we'll try light first. Okay, so that's already done a pretty good job. We might not have to go too much further than that. Um, you know, moderate. Uh, okay, that's working a little bit better as far as getting rid of noise. Let's load this up again. Okay, I think we might actually go with that. Um, okay, so let's just hit apply and I'll show you, you know, how fast this program is. So it's crunching through the image, um, going through, and, and I don't know exactly what's involved in their algorithms, but I know that it did a decent job on the clouds in the last one of preserving some detail. All right, load, and there we go. Okay, so here's where, in my opinion at least, Noiseless Pro is seeming like it's gonna fall short. So look at the stars here. And then, uh, so this is the noise uh, reduction algorithm from Noiseless Pro. I'll drag this mask down so we have the same mask because I was, wanted to uh, keep that noise reduction away from the ground because I wanted to keep some details there. So, okay. Now let's turn on the Topaz version. Okay, so you see what's happening here? So this is Topaz and this is MacFun. Look how much detail we're losing in the stars. And I would also argue that Topaz is doing a better job of reducing noise in the image and also preserving some detail in the stars. Whereas if I go down to MacFun, I'm seeing a little bit more noise pop up in the background, but I'm also seeing details from the stars go away. Uh, so this, this, in my opinion, is where MacFun falls short right now uh, with astrophotography. It does a great job on clouds. Um, and skies and preserving the detail in landscapes, but with stars specifically, that's where it's falling short. So hopefully, again, uh, this is version 1.0, but hopefully they'll be able to address this in a future uh, update to the program. But until then, I'll probably still be using Topaz, uh, at least for, this, for these types of uh, images. But it's good to know. It's good to know uh, that there's different programs that uh, are best for certain situations. Uh, maybe one day we'll have one, uh, hopefully for MacFun, that will address all of it so we won't have to use different programs. But until then, uh, this is how it will be. So let me know, guys, if you have any questions at all. I will do my best to answer them in the comments below, and I will talk to you later. All right.